So, hello everyone and welcome to uh, another My Music. I'm going to be speaking to John Douglas in a minute about his life in music. Uh, but first, let's have this little video from Analog Trash uh, and see if you can spot the man throwing the guitar in the water. Hi, John. Coming all the way from Glasgow. Uh, I'm yeah. in uh, sunny Somerset. If you hear um, noise in the background, that's called children. Uh, you, you can't kind of uh, live with them, live without them these days. I mean, it's just uh, uh, one of those things that happens when you broadcast from your home. Um, that's, a, that's a lovely uh, drape, by the way, that you have in the back. Is, or is that curtains? No, it's a drape on the wall. Yeah, it is yeah, a drape. Right. Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice. Yeah, where did where did you, where did you pick up that? Yes, my wife got that when she was on her travels. So brought it back and it fitted out. Yeah, so I like that. Yes. Look, we're here to talk about your your new album. Yeah, it's been out a couple of weeks now. And what brought you to uh, to bring this collection of songs together? Um, basically, it was first of all I wanted to do some some solo shows. Um, I'd, I'd never, I'd done busking before, you know, uh, but never really took to the stage on my own with a guitar. And uh, over the past maybe four or five years, I did a few guest slots with some friends of mine, just with my guitar. I wasn't, I did one or two songs. And and then I started watching some of my friends that, that do this, that play, go out on tour and play shows with acoustic guitars. And I thought, that's a good skill. And uh, I quite like the, the kind of format just yourself and a guitar and and you know seeing you can take to an audience and there seems to be for some reason when you're doing that when i'm doing that kind of thing i tend to talk a bit more i tend to set the scene or talk about the background of songs and that kind of appeals to me the the sort of chat side of it as well and uh, I, I started doing that and uh, I, I played some shows in ireland and i played around about and i thought to myself i'm going to do this I should have something that people can buy and take away that actually represents you know, what they just saw, me with my acoustic guitar. So that was basically it. The journey was the live thing first, and then I thought, well, make something. And uh, I, made the, I made the record really quickly, and, and uh, yeah, I'm proud of it. I think it sits really well. Yeah, I do. I do too. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it, when, you, when you've been a, 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 a guitarist in a band and slightly off to the side to, to some extent, I mean, you've always sung as well, but uh, you know, when when you've got that band to to play off, and you know, you, you you're focusing on your bit to to move from that to being laid bare in a way, <laughs> standing wait with everybody waiting for you to do it all. Did that cool? Did that cause you any? To have to reframe or rethink about anything at all, uh, always in a, in a kind of positive way. Um, mm. First of all, the, the, the songs I had to think about myself and, and the dynamics of the songs, just with my guitar and my voice. And I watched watched a few people who do who do it and sit there with the guitar and I look at them and I think you've got a whole band in their head and they're just bashing away and singing. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to. I wanted to really be aware that it was just me and my guitar. Because I was playing supports, so I was playing to an audience that that weren't mine. I just had to think of the song choices, given that that was the arena. I'm going to go out there and play to people who don't know me, don't know the song. What songs can I play that I think I can, you know, put across? And 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 which ones will appeal? I think in that in that arena. The refreshing was a kind of big word because apart from. Um, being interested in, in, in learning this this new thing. I kind of run a bit dry with writing. The Trash Cans has always been about writing songs and 
there's, a, there's five of us in the band and we've always sort of chipped in, but working on songs and, and uh, that kind of dried up for me. So I knew I needed something to kickstart that. And this seems to have done it. As soon as I started focusing on the guitar and myself and thinking about going out to play, songs started arriving again. So the, the, they are the kind of positive, that was the positive aspects of getting away from the, the kind of five piece band. It was the big sound for a start. Mm-hmm. And it always, you know, people are very passionate about, about our records. So it's a lovely place to go when, when the trash cans tour, whatever it is, America or, or or elsewhere, the people that show up know them inside out, and it's kind of been their companion through their lives. And there's just a big load of load of history and connection there. So that's a beautiful place to be in. That's kind of ongoing. You know, we're, we're still kind of halfway through making a new trash cans record. So to step away from that and do something where I'm just on my own, it's it's been refreshing. And I'm no, uh, you know, I'm no spring chicken. To find something refreshing at Masters in life is very, very positive. You know, has it actually given you energy to the trash can stuff that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, there's times where it just becomes. I, I, I try and do it as regularly as I can. I've got a space that I go to, and I just get away from the internet and the front door, and you know, the dog barking or whatever, <laughs> and I can go and just. Just, just wait for things to arrive and play and mess around. And sometimes weeks go by and there's nothing happened. And then you get something. But uh, months were going by and it turns into a couple of years. It coincided with the lockdown. That was possibly a kind of mood dampener as well. Certainly when I started to think of, okay, forget about it. And there's a bunch of people I'm going to go and play, play to that don't know me. That that did spark things started happening. And every everything I come up with always, I mean the guys in the band will get to hear it, you know, and if something. Well, now I was going to ask you that. That was going to be my next question. What what did the rest of the band make of it when you played it? Well, they're very positive. Any time I've been, I just feel them, you know, cheering me on. Two of the guys live in America, and uh, we can make records. We can make records fine with the internet, and but getting together to play is a different matter. So when we know that there's a release date coming, we'll try and arrange time away from like some of the guys work you know take a couple of weeks off work go and play shows uh me doing it on my own first of all it's not getting in the way of any plans <laughs> also playing trash cans songs that, that you know anything that, that keeps the catalog you know out there and there's also the other thing with the songs that i'm doing the, the songs that i would written just didn't quite fit the mood they kind of ended up on the shelf so i've kind of revisited a few of them and a couple of those are on the record um, which 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 ones are yeah. those on the record? Uh, there's one called Orange Crayons that was written a while back. Was that a whole song? That in terms yeah. of was it fully yeah. developed or was it yeah? Yeah, they, I've got, I made a, a demo of it. Like it must have been about ninety three or something. Uh, it was that sort of drum machine and stuff. We can, I think we might have even got to the stage of rehearsing it with the band, but there was just a bunch of other stuff came along and. Sometimes just th- things take a, uh, they end up just on the shelf for some reason, it didn't fit the, the record or whatever. Also, the trash cans have got a thing, you know, there's a bit of a sound. The things are just a bit too away from that, they might not generally fit. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was written a while back, but it was a, it felt good to, to, to bring it, put it out in a proper way. And I play, I like the way I play it with the acoustic guitar, it sounds it suits that approach. The other thing I was desperate to kind of ask you about was you've got a prefab Sprout song on here. I've always loved protest songs because I I think it's kind of overlooked in the catalogue. But I just wonder whether you were like, for yourself, were were like drawn to that when you were thinking about doing the prefab Sprout song on here because it's so stripped back as an album. But I, I always loved that. In recent years, I've kind of, there's there's two records, well maybe three records of theirs that I think survived. Uh, protest songs is again, as you say, it's, it's probably one of my favourites. Some of the songs on that are, you know, they just they just haunt me. They're always in my head. Sparse and you know, there's a band playing, you know, it's it's people in a room. Yeah, they were famous, obviously, for the Thomas Dolby. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I think the Steve McQueen is a record that that. That I'll, I'll revisit as well, and some of the stuff for the first album I, I'm really fond of these days. Uh, but yeah, protest songs is a is a, is a 
is a wonderful record. Some of the songs on it are just fantastic. Life of Surprises is beautiful. I was going to say, Life of Surprises. Yeah, Till the Cows Come Home. Just and Lyrically, he's always been a, a genius, that, that fella. And I think at that period, he was being very, very, not eccentric, but very true to his character. The love themes tend to take over later on. The themes seem to not be as interesting. Uh, you know, they're just very personal. And, I, and, I, and I'm kind of drawn to that more than quite like him when he's just chatting away about his life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that's that's why that album draws for me. It it, it just, it, he kind of feels lost on that album <laughs> in <laughs> some ways. Yeah, and sometimes cool. when, so I think sometimes when a singer-songwriter sounds a little bit lost, um, and, and maybe probably in some ways he was because that that album followed the com- the most commercially successful album and and he probably was like a rabbit in the headlights to some extent which is what a lot of artists are like when they've uh, when they've hit you know commercial success probably trying to find himself a little bit again <laughs> but it but it's, it it sounds yeah. like the most genuine well you know it's it's just that I've got a real soft spot. Genuine's a funny word. They're just doing the best they can. Well, what are you hoping an audience will take away from this group of songs? Oh, geez, I don't know. I just hopefully, like any show, when you play songs, you hopefully people just get a bit lost mm-hmm. and listening to it, and get taken away by by the songs. That's that's kind of what I hope for when I go to see a show that a song will take me on a journey somewhere. You know, you end up resonating emotionally or you know not feeling alone or just get lost in getting out of your getting out of your head into some other place some beautiful place or but yeah i don't know what gigs i don't know as i say uh, uh, every time i've done shows so far it's been to, to audiences have been kind of not kind of new to what i've to, to all of the material and uh it's been lovely, actually. People have really enjoyed yeah. it. And come has it, has it brought you a different kind of audience, John? Has it? Is it? Oh, I don't know. As I say, it's always been someone else's audience, but they would say, oh, that one, I really loved this one. About the, I think weightlifting was a big hit straight away. Every time I played it, people were like, wow, that, that took us somewhere there. I mean, they could feel a, a thing in the room. Um. So, yeah, it's... it's, it's playing on, playing on your own, because, it, because it's... Oh so easy to set up in a way it's it's it you know getting as you say getting a band together and especially when you're in different parts of the world uh in one place collectively to play somewhere but also you know with it's with a band there's more equipment etc when it's you and a, a couple of guitars other than having to get guitars in tune and stuff like that it's it's fairly easy set up does that flexibility in a way allow you to now develop a, a, a completely different audience because you can play a different size of venue you can you can potentially uh you you can potentially play sort of different gigs as well i went i went to see jessica hoot last night at lime regis of all uh-huh. places um right. you know where we've got a little theater in lime regis that's not a kind of place that you can play with a band it's too small a venue yeah well there is a there's a truth to that yeah there's definitely a whole different circuit where i could show up as far as you know the, the equipment and stuff yeah the, with a big band there's definitely a, a limited amount of places you can do but yeah again i'm looking forward to that you know i've not as, as i say i've not really done loads of shows next year i've got i've got an agent now and I'm there next <clears throat> next kind of spring early summer and that's kind of exciting for me because that'll be the first time I'm going out and people will have the record and, you know, they'll be coming along, hopefully. To, you know, with that, they'll know the songs and they'll know the kind of the way I'm presenting them. Jessica last night mentioned it was not only the first time uh, she's played in Lyme Regis, but it's the first time she's been to Lyme Regis. Does that give you, or does this give you an opportunity at this stage in life to perhaps visit some places that you've, always missed off the map yeah that probably does but my touring life i mean as, as being a touring musician apart from the trash cans i've been playing with my wife band uh eddie reader so she does she tours the uk and ireland sort of constantly and the if you're going to do that our agent's very wise so the circuit's different every you know she goes she only goes back if she goes back to liverpool she'll do it every third year 
and in between she'll play the the kind of a, a you know out of the way places kind of like Lyme Regis or like Hastings or um, where Bex Hill on Sea we were the other day, and you mm. can tell. You know the the people that run the shows are so enthusiastic, you know, because there there's not a lot of people pass through town, maybe, or so they they try their best. So there's always and there's always a good good crowd in a lot of those places because, as you say, a bit off off the beaten track. So I think a lot of people appreciate it when when artists come to town that, that you know maybe you'd only read about them playing the big town. So yeah, I have seen a lot of the smaller and and the, the kind of more off the beaten tracks. Parts of of the UK and Ireland as well over the years. Do it on my own will be different again, uh, and I'm sure there'll be places I'll, I'll, I'll end up where I've never been as well, which is always a pleasure, you know, to wander into somewhere new. I think that's one of the yeah the, the things that appeals of being a touring musician. You're, you're waking up somewhere and it's it's new to you. You go and explore. Yeah. A little. Final kind of question today, John. Will, will there be another one of these albums? Who can tell? You know, as I said, I'm no spring chicken. I, I, I love the, the format of, of a, one guy with guitar. Some of my favourite records are, are like that. I don't mind a little bit of instrumentation now and again, but yeah, I wouldn't write it off. Yeah, I, do, I don't see why not. Lovely. John, thanks for joining me today. For anyone that hasn't yet uh, heard the record. Under my own name, it's John Douglas, the album by John Douglas. It's on Reveal Records. And you can get it through Bandcamp. You could probably put it in your local CD store if there's one that still exists. And you can get it through, you can stream it and you can get it through Amazon and all those kind of gaps. And if you come along to any of my shows or any of the shows that I'm doing with Eddie, uh, you'll be able to get it on the, or the merch store. Well, thank you for coming to talk to us today. Um, thank you so much for being here. Everybody, John Douglas, uh, do check out his music. And uh, I'll be back with more of my music sometime soon. Until then, bye for now. Thank you.